Hi, I'm Roger Lin. In this video, I'm going to show how to disassemble and reassemble your Linstrument or Linstrument 128 in order to install replacement parts or perform repairs. If you're considering buying a Linstrument, this video will also show you how easy it is to do these things by yourself at home. Note that disassembling your Linstrument does not void the warranty, but I prefer that you don't take it apart unless you need to. In this video, I'll be showing the large Linstrument model, but the Linstrument 128 is identical except for the shorted length. The video is divided into chapters that are shown at the top of the screen. But for most repairs, you'll only be watching specific sections. The Installing Replacement Parts page on my site instructs you regarding which sections to watch for each type of part replacement. Here goes. Here's how to remove the top panel and playing surface. First, remove the screws around the top panel edges and put them in a cup so none get lost in your carpet. Now lift off the top panel. If you're replacing the white playing surface or doing further disassembly, simply peel off the playing surface. If you're only replacing the top panel and or the playing surface, then skip forward to the section Install the Playing Surface and Top Panel. Here's how to remove the black touch sensor sheet if you need to replace it. If you have an early large instrument model with serial number 200 or lower, the touch sensor sheet can't be removed using these instructions. So email me at the support address and I'll help you. Please be careful when removing the touch sensor sheet because it is highly sensitive and fragile. First, there's a small amount of residual adhesive from the sensor fabrication process that makes it stick a little to the circuit board beneath it a little. To break this adhesive, use an ordinary dull kitchen knife and slide it under the edges of the sensor sheet along the full length of the, the front and rear edges, like this. I'll place it underneath the plastic and then just slide it to break that adhesive. Then I'll do the same thing in the rear of the sensor sheet. And the adhesive is not very strong, it's just a little bit of residual adhesive. Now, place the knife under the center and without being careful not to bend the touch sensor, just lift it straight up. And what that'll do is lift these little tails on the ends out of their tiny connectors. If you're replacing the touch sensor sheet, you can now skip forward to the section installing the touch sensor. Here's how to replace one of the two circuit boards. First, Loosen the screws in the front wood piece to make it easier to remove the circuit board assembly. Note that if you're replacing the larger main circuit board, you'll need to first remove the touch sensor sheet as described in the previous section. So to start, remove the circuit board assembly by lifting the left edge of the circuit board assembly, sliding it to the left, and lifting it out. In later units, you'll see two packets of silica desiccant duct taped to the chassis bottom to help absorb any excess moisture. Now flip the board assembly over and place it on top of the chassis to hold it in place. First thing we'll do is to remove the small ribbon cable that connects the two boards. To do that, grab one end of it near its connector and wiggle it out gently and pull it out. And do the same thing to the other end. Grab it near the connector, wiggle it a little bit and pull it out. Then set that aside. To separate the two boards, remove the hex nuts on the back and place them in a cup so you won't lose them in your carpet. Now the LED board, the smaller of the two boards, will be removable very, very easily. So replace whichever board it is you're replacing, the LED board or the main board, and then simply attach them back together. 
So the first thing I'll do will be to replace the hex nuts. And then now replace the small ribbon connector. Notice that it has a small key that only lets you install it one way and that has to fit into the hole on one side of these connectors. So press it in on the one side and then press it in on the other. And if it doesn't fit, you just have to turn it around to get the key in the right position. Now that the circuit board assembly is reassembled, flip it back over and to put it back into the chassis, put it a little bit to the left of where it should go and then slide those jacks on the end and they will fit into the holes on the right side. The left and right edges of the larger board should be flush with the edges of the metal chassis. Finally, retighten the screws in the front wood piece. Here's how to install the touch sensor sheet. If you've replaced the sheet or if you had to take it off in order to uh, replace your main circuit board. So first of all, orient it so that this, the column with the space between is on the left side and so that the tabs are facing up. Carefully insert the little tail on the left side into the mouth of the small connector. Now if you have that tail flat onto the circuit board, you won't go in, so you have to lift it a little bit so that it's inside the mouth of the connector and then it will easily slide in. Do the same thing on the right side. Make sure that the tail is in the mouth of the connector and then with your thumb just slide it in without applying any force. Now shift the position of the touch sensor slightly to the left or right so that the round holes on the sensor match up with the holes in the circuit board beneath it. Again, don't force it as you move it left and right. So you want those holes to all be circles and not little footballs. Here's how to install the white playing surface and top panel. First, place the white playing surface onto the circuit board assembly, centering it horizontally. It should be a little shorter than the width of the circuit board and chassis. This is intentional because stretching it a little bit while attaching the top panel helps counteract any expansion of the silicone material under unusual heat. Now put on the top panel onto the playing surface. Now replace the panel screws loosely in the holes so they stick out about 1 16th inch each. The screws should now all be sticking out of the panel about a sixteenth of an inch so they're all loose. Note that the screws not only hold the instrument together, but also press the electrical contacts of the bottom of the touch sensor sheet against the mating contacts on the top of the circuit board. So if a screw is too loose, the contacts may not touch and Y-axis movements may not work properly on columns that are near the loose screw. Or if too tight, the white playing surface may bulge out, given that it's flexible silicon rubber, and not look pretty near the screw. But don't worry, there's actually a very wide range of screw tightness that will work fine. Okay, to start now, adjust the playing surface so that the per split, but per split settings button is in the center of its hole. Then tighten the screw above it using this guideline. When pressing down on the panel near the screw with one hand, tighten the screw with the other hand until its head is level with the top panel and you start to feel the increased resistance of the screw being fully seated in the hole. Then tighten an additional quarter turn and no more. Now let's do the same thing for the global settings button. I'm going to press down near the screw that's nearest the global settings button while I'm pulling the sheet so that the, the uh, global settings button is centered in its hole, then I'm going to tighten the screw until I start to feel the increased resistance 
of the screw being fully seated in the hole and then add a quarter tune, turn. And at that point, the screw, uh, before I tighten it, will be flush with the top of the panel. Now I'm going to do a similar thing with the two screws on the left edge to make sure that this is an even line, a border between the pads and the uh, metal panel. So I'm going to press this over and that will place these buttons in the center of their holes and then I'll tighten them down using the same rule. So now the left side is done. Let's do the same thing in mirror image to the right side. The idea is to get the margin between the edge of the pads and the metal panel margin to be the same all around the surface. So to do that, given that the panels, uh, given that the, the uh, playing surface is slightly shrunk, I'm going to press this up into the corner and then tighten it. And then I'm going to press this corner of the pad sheet into the corner and tighten it. Now I'm going to press a little bit in this direction to make sure this is an even line. And this may be different for the sheet you have because each one is going to have a, a different amount of shrinkage. And then I'm going to tighten these screws using the same rule. Now lastly what we want to do is tighten these screws in the middle of the uh, uh, rear edge and in the middle of the front edge. So I'm going to start with the two screws in the middle and I'm going to press the surface so that that margin between the pads and metal cutout is even. And then I'm going to tighten that one using the same rule. Then I'm going to do the same thing down here. And adding this surface tension is going to be very helpful because that will help if you happen to be in a warm climate from the sheet expanding, which is something that is naturally done for silicone under heat. It won't expand very much if it does, but it's just enough. So we're adding just a little bit of surface tension. Do the same thing here and the same thing here. Stretching it up, stretching it down. Now verify that the screws are tightened correctly by testing Y-axis output on one pad within each column. To do this, you can use a mini monitoring app like MIDI Monitor on Mac or MIDI OX on Windows, watching for sent control chain 74 messages in response to moving your finger within a pad in the Y-axis. Or you can use Linstrument's official and free software synth Surge XT and select a sound that responds to Y-axis movements such as Duduck in the Linstrument MPE Library Winds folder. Moving your finger forward and back should produce a change in the sound. If not, test it again while pressing above or below the column to learn whether the loose screw is above or below the column, then tighten the nearest screw to where you pressed until the same finger movement produces Y-axis output. So let's do it. I'm going to only test this row, which is one of the two center rows, and I'm going to move my finger in the Y-axis, listening to the duduck sound from the Linstrument MPE Library Winds folder. So you hear that tone change. Let's try it on the second column. Now I have an intention, un I've intentionally loosened this screw so that it doesn't produce Y-axis output. So listen to the third column, which is starting to be affected by this loose screw. It's also here. So to get these to work, what I need to do is press above and below. Let's try pressing below first. That doesn't work. Pressing above causes it to work. So there must be a loose screw here. And this is the one. So if I tighten this using the rule, it now works. Now I'll just continue on all 25 columns or on this written 128, all 16 columns. Now we've proven that all the screws are correctly tightened and the instrument is fully assembled. Here's how to calibrate the touch sensor. If you've replaced the touch sensor 
or the main larger circuit board, then you must perform a sensor calibration, which teaches the internal computer the precise locations of the left, right, upper, and lower edges of each of the pads. To perform the calibration, find a dull pointed object, for example, a retracted plastic ballpoint pen. Don't use your finger because it's too big to be precise. And don't use something sharp that could cut the playing surface. So something like this is perfect. To perform the calibration, in global settings, actions column, press the calibrate button. Now, by the way, a green light on the calibrate button means it is has been calibrated before, but since you're Changing the sensor, it has been calibrated for the previous sensor, and you need to calibrate it for the new sensor. If it's red, that means that the calibration data has been erased, and it's using default data. This can happen sometimes if um, you've uh, reverted to an earlier software version, or if you've edited and uploaded source code without the trick set on the source code page. So anyway, uh, it's green now, so what we're doing is just overriding the older calibration with the new calibration. Now I'm going to press that button and you'll see four horizontal lines in blue. Now drag the object, the pen or whatever it is, from the extreme left edge to the extreme right edge of the lowest blue row, moving at a consistent medium pressure and speed without stopping at the gaps between pads, taking a full four seconds from left to right edges, then lifting the object straight up at the end. The pad colors will change as you move them. Here you go. So I'm putting it right at the edge. One, two, three, four. Then I lift straight up. Then I go back in the other direction. One, two, three, four. Then I do the next row. And by the way, you can do each of these eight passes in any order you want. And then when you've done all of them correctly, and remember to lift it right straight up so it doesn't trick it into thinking you've started going in the other direction. But once you've done all eight passes, then the display will change to show nine vertical columns, or on instrument 128, six vertical columns. And notice that I'm not stopping and starting. I'm running at a continuous speed. So here are the nine columns. I'm going to do the same thing, going up. And in this case, I'm going to go and do all the up directions first. And then I'm going to follow up by doing the down directions. And I'm not pressing too hard. I'm just pressing enough that it does enough, keeps enough pressure and senses every position that I'm touching. And that's it. You now have a calibrated instrument.